Namaste from Istanbul, I'm Upasna and welcome back to my channel. I'm extremely happy and blown out of my mind by the amount of love and support that you guys have shown to my last video. I wanted to start this video by thanking each and every one of you for all the positive energy and blessings that you have sent my way and I just want to let you know that it means a lot to me. So without further ado, let's start. The topic for this video is how to become a better person. And it's something I've been working on, uh, trying to achieve on a day-to-day -day basis for a really long time. But it's easier said than done. After all, at the end of the day, we are all dragged down by our insecurities. I'm not talking about insecurities of an external type. For example, you might not like your nose. I'm insecure about my teeth. One of my front tooth was broken when I was six or seven years old. But that's beside the point. Um, the point is that these external insecurities can be fixed by going to an expert, let's say a plastic surgeon or a dentist. However, the insecurities that are internal, because they are internal, cannot be fixed by someone on the outside. Only you can help yourself in that area. Of course, you can always find inspiration in other people, but truth of the matter is you will be responsible to introspect and retrospect and find ways to be a better person, a better version of yourself, to be more precise. Now, there might be people who might say they're happy the way they are and that is possible, but let's face it. Even the most confident of people have their fair share of internal struggle. Nobody is perfect. You know why? Because scientifically, as homo sapiens, we are yet to use our brains to its full potential. So let's cut that nonsense about perfection already and focus on the search for a better you. Among the many things that contribute towards making me a better person are, number one, anger management. Now, where did that come from? Well, it's on top of my list because no one thinks straight when they're angry. I know I don't. Um, years ago, I was a short-tempered young girl. Sometimes my anger was justified. Other times it was trivial. I bet I got it from my dad. But either way, it always ended up making me feel bad about myself. I felt miserable inside and ended up going to bed with tears. I never gained anything out of it the anger. My temper never contributed to my self-growth and anger coupled with an ego is a toxic combination. I must tell you that. It was eating away at my core. It took me quite some time to manage my anger and ego. I didn't suppress it in and um, bottle it in. That would only result in me becoming a ticking time bomb. I just started seeing things from a different perspective and channeling my energy um, to align my chakras minus the yoga. I started reading a lot of great books and poetry uh, that were predominantly spiritual, uh, although implicitly so. They didn't have a book title um, saying your guide to spirituality or uh, your one way ticket to nirvana, definitely not. Never have I ever bought a self-help book not that they are bad, but just because I didn't. Please don't get me wrong. I just love reading books that make you think and then gently push you to reflect on the mysteries of life in general and not tell you what to do to, in order to achieve this or that. Uh, again, not saying that there is anything wrong with those books. But I personally think that we need to um, find our own blueprints for our own lives. So try finding something that will help you um, understand and prioritize the value of your time on this planet. Number two, understanding that money is overrated. At a very young age, I decided that I would never go after money. Somehow money never fascinated me. Therefore, I never wrecked my brains in that direction. I'm not saying money is not important. 
um, I'm not stupid. All I'm trying to say is that it's not worth losing your mental or physical health over if it gets to it. Anywho, financial independence is crucial to me, but uh, not at the cost of losing my sanity. Number three, find the purpose of your life. At some point in time, we have all gone through a sort of existential crisis where we must have asked these questions. Who am I? Why am I here? Anytime there is a discussion on the topic of the purpose of life and I happen to find myself in such a debate, I hear people talking about what they believe is the purpose of life in general, um, not specific to their own lives and they defend their grounds and sources and I'm fascinated. When it's my turn to contribute to such a deep question, I tell them my purpose in life is to go to bed with a clear conscience. Most times I get confused nodding, but that's fine because that is exactly what the purpose of my life is. I just prefer to keep it simple. Now, I cannot guarantee that I would not do any wrong or not be the reason for pain to somebody else. I most certainly will. Because remember the adage, to err is human, to forgive is divine. And that brings me to number four, forgiveness. Forgive others, but also do not forget to forgive yourself for your mistakes. I know I have and then tried never repeating them again. We're full of flaws and most people deserve a second chance. I've had several situations in my life where people I loved hurt me. Funny thing, I still love them and they're still a part of my life because I chose to forgive them. It required courage, but still easier than living with hatred, digging deep and feeding on my poor little heart. Number five, be kind and learn to empathize. I believe in being kind to all kinds, but also be kind to yourself. Kindness has a healing power that is so incredible. It can be practiced in your daily life in so many different ways. All it takes is to put yourself in the other person's shoes and see where they're coming from. Listen to their story, tell them yours. There is so much we can learn from each other. For example, since the last few years, I put some thought into something as trivial as flower gifting. Some people find it weird when I say I don't like flowers to be gifted to me anymore, whatever occasion it might be. Some people simply assume that I don't like flowers. Who doesn't like flowers for God's sake? I simply don't like flowers being plucked from the flower bed so that they can come die in my room. Just leave the flowers be where they are, happy, smelling pretty, um, and all that. Or, if you badly want to get me flowers, why don't you just get me a potted plant? How about that? Um, I bring this up to emphasize that something as trivial as a bouquet of flowers can actually impact your thought process and change you. By empathizing with the flowers, I'm not ending up saving those flowers. No, but at least I don't have to see them die in my room. Clearly flowers are not trivial to me, are they? Moving on. Can you hear that sound? There's a construction going on downstairs and it has taken me all day to shoot this video in installments. So bear with me if the lighting changed from when I started the video and what it is now. Okay, I'm gonna have to wait. So finally the drilling has stopped and I'm gonna wrap this video up with number six, empowerment. This is so important. And when I say empowerment, I'm not exactly referring to women's empowerment. I mean, I'm all for women's empowerment. Um, go girl power. But first, empower yourself irrespective of your gender, 
stand up for yourself, look out for those who cannot stand up for themselves, things like that. You need not necessarily have to directly go out to protest for that. Again, do not get me wrong, I'm a pro protest person for all the right causes. What I'm trying to say is that start with yourself and your vicinity. Trust me, it's going to have a ripple effect. Change needs to come from within. And on that note, I wish you all a happy self-reflecting weekend ahead. If you like my video, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and show me some love. Thank you for your time. Bye.